This is example three of chapter five, soil classification. In, in this example, we are going to actually classify two soils, soil A and B. In, inter, in this video, I'm going to focus on soil A first. So on the right hand side is the particle size distribution curve of these two soils. So let's focus on soil A. And we are given this uh, PSD curve and we are also given the at bar limit test results. So we know the liquid limit LL 30 and plastic limit PL of 22 for soil A. So in the classification, remember that step by step procedure we went over in the previous lecture. Uh, we're going to first find out the percentage of different types of particles, coarse grain, fine grain, gravel, and sand in the soil. And for soil A, so shown on this slide, actually, this important sieve, number 200 sieve line is actually shown on this slide. And this corresponds to particle size of 0.075 millimeter. Okay. So that's how you get this number 200 sieve line. Okay. And anything smaller than 0.075, so anything finer than that is classified as fine grain soil. So that's fines. So from this curve, if you look at the intersection of this number 200 sieve with curve of soil A, so that's the intersection point, and the corresponding percent finer, that's the y-axis, is about 8 or 9 percent. So that's about 8 percent. Okay. So this is the percent of fines, basically. You have 8 percent of soil A is finer than 0.075. So that's basically our percent of fines. So that's 8%. So that's how you get this percentage from the curve. So again, these are the percent smaller than that number 200 sieve. And then the percent of coarse grain soil is 100% minus the percent of fine, which is 8%. So that's 92%. And then for gravel and sand, for this PSD curve of soil A, uh, so first let's look at the x-axis. So the horizontal axis, the x-axis is particle diameter. So you have on this axis, the largest particle diameter is only 1.0 millimeter. And remember the gravel and sand, so if you remember the USCS system, so if I plot gravel, sand, and fines, on this axis here. And between gravel and sand, that particle size is 4.75 millimeter. And that's 76.2. That's the upper limit of gravel. And between sand and fines is 0.075. So that's that number 200 sieve. Okay. So gravels are basically particles larger than 4.75. And on this chart, the largest value is 1.0. Actually, if you focus on curve for soil A, the largest one, so that one corresponding to 100% passing, is even smaller than 1.0, which means 100% of soil A passes this point, it's around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 millimeter. And so that also means 100% of soil will pass 4.75. So 100% of soil A is smaller than 4.75. So that means the gravel is 0%. So 100% of soil is smaller than 1 point of 4 point of soil A is smaller than 4.75 millimeter. Okay. And gravels are particles larger than 4.75. So you have this is 0% of gravel and then the percent of sand is basically percent of coarse minus percent of gravel and for this example that's 92 percent okay. so we have 92 percent of sand in this soil so we have eight percent fine 92 percent coarse zero percent gravel and 92 percent of sand so the next thing we can get from this PSD curve that we'll need uh, 
are these D values, so D10, D30, and D60 values. And these values will be used to calculate coefficients of gradation and coefficient coefficient of gradation and coefficient of uniformity. And we can use these two coefficients to tell if soil is well or poorly graded. And for D10, so let's start with D10. So the definition of D10 is the particle size corresponding to 10% final. So we start from 10% final on the y-axis. And this line is actually already shown on the figure. And the corresponding particle size is D10. So that's D10. And for this soil A, D10 is approximately um, 0 0.085 millimeter. And D30 is particle size corresponding to 30% finer. So you start from 30% on the y-axis. And then you find the corresponding x-axis. Okay. So that's your D30. And for this example, that's about, it's a little bit larger than 0 0.1. So it's 0 0.12 millimeter. And that D60 value, so you start from 60% finer on the y-axis. And then you find the corresponding diameter particle size. Good. So in reality, you want to use a straight edge ruler um, to find this D30, D60 value. Okay. And this is about 0.135. Okay. So that's the three D values. And once we have these values, then you can calculate those two coefficients. The first one, coefficient of uniformity. And by definition, that's D60 over D10. And if you substitute the values we just read from the curve, and this is about 1.59. And then the CC value, coefficient of gradation, by definition, D30 squared over D60 by D10. Okay. And that value is one point. Two five, okay. Okay, so I'll come back to these two values when we need to determine the gradation of soil. Now we have used all the particle size distribution information. So we have obtained the percent of fine grain, coarse grain, gravel, and sand, and we also have these two coefficients, Cu and Cc. And then we are also given the Atbert limit test results. So we have the liquid limit. So for soil A, liquid limit is 30 and plastic limit is 22. So we have LL of 30. In plastic limit of 22, we can calculate the plastic index, PI, which is defined as LL minus PL. So that's 30 minus 22. And PI is 8. Okay. So that's all the information given for soil A. And then next, that's step one. So next, we're going to use this uh, information we just calculated in the classification table to find group symbol and group name. So this is table 5.2, and this is a table we're going to use to find group symbol. And first, we enter from the left-hand side. So we enter from here. And for our soil A, we know 92% of the soil is coarse grained. So it's going to be a coarse green soil. Remember, percent of coarse for soil A is 92%. Okay. So we have more than 50% retained on or above number 200. Okay. And then we have 0% gravel and 92% sand. So we have 92% sand. Okay. In this condition, right here, 50% or more coarse fraction passes number four simply means more than half of the coarse fraction is sand. Okay. So basically you have more sand than gravel in the soil, you're going to pick this route. And 
if you have more gravel than sand, you're going to pick the upper route. The soil is going to be classified as gravel in that case. So for our example, soil A, so this is soil A, and we have more sand and gravel, 92% of sand, 0% gravel, so soil is sand. And then the next one here, this is a tricky part. So if you look at these two conditions, the upper one says clean sands with less than 5% fines, and the bottom one says sands with fines more than 12% fines. And remember for soil A, we have 8% fines. So this 8% doesn't belong to either one of these two conditions. So the tricky part here is this footnote B. So pay attention to this superscript here. So if you look at footnote B here, it states that sands with 5 to 12% fines require dual symbols. So in our case, we have 8% fines, which is between 5 and 12%. So we're going to use a dual symbol for soil A. And for dual symbol, there are a number of options here. Okay, so we have these options. And as uh, we discussed in the previous lecture, in the soil classification basics, the dual symbol for coarse green soil. Okay, so soil A, this is a coarse green soil. Okay, so let's look at this dual symbol case in a little bit more detail. So dual symbol. So this is soil A, which is, we know it's a coarse green soil, because we have 92% coarse and only 8% fines, okay. coarse green. And for coarse green soil, if you look at our previous video, you know that the dual symbol for coarse green soil typically has two parts. So we have part one and part two. It's a dual symbol. And because soil, this soil A is, we know already the fine or the coarse portion is sand. So the first letter of both parts is going to be S. Okay. And if you look at these four options in footnote B, you notice that they are all S, S here. So we know it's sand, so we have S. And then the first portion first part, so let's call this part one of the dual symbol, and this is part two of the dual symbol. Okay. Okay. In part one, again, this is something we discussed in the previous lecture, relates to the gradation. Okay. Oh, sorry. And to determine the gradation of soil, we use that two, those two coefficients, Cu and Cc. And for soil A, we just calculated Cu and Cc. So Cu 1.5, and Cc, uh, excuse me, Cu is 1.59, and Cc is 1.25. So we have Cu of 1.59, and Cc of 1.25. And we know the coarse portion are sands. So coarse portion of soil A is sand. Okay. And for sand to be considered well graded, you must have both conditions met. The first condition is Cu greater than six, and the second condition is Cc between one and three. So you must meet both conditions for that soil to be classified as well graded. In, in our case, the Cu value is smaller than six. Okay. So it doesn't meet that criteria. So this sand is going to be poorly graded. So if I write here to recall, for well graded sand, You must have both conditions. Cu greater than six, greater than or equal to six, and Cc between one and three. Okay. So 
because CU is smaller than 6, so we don't meet that first condition. So that means the soil is poorly graded sand. Okay. So that gives us the first part of that dual symbol. The latter or the symbol for poorly graded soil is P. So that first part is SP. So we have part one, and then part two of that dual symbol. So part two of that dual symbol relates to the fine contents. So whether you have suits or clay, it relates to fine contents. Okay. And to determine fine contents, we need to use the plasticity chart. Okay. We need to use plasticity chart and put our soil onto the plasticity chart. So basically, we have LL and PI value of the soil. So let's plot them on the plasticity chart, see where it plots. And this is a plasticity chart. And we have LL of 30, okay. and then PI of 8. So if we plot that point, it's just above this A line here. So this point, this is soil A. LL30, PI of 8. Okay. So this soil plots above A line. And remember, A line separates inorganic clays from inorganic suits. So M for suits and C for clay. So we know that because soil plots above A line, the fine contents are clays. And the symbol for clays is C. So the second part is SC. So fine contents. So plots above A line. And the fine contents are in the organic clays. Okay. And symbol for clay is C. So that's how you get this second letter here. Okay. So that's a complete symbol for soil A, SPSC. Okay. Once we have the dual symbol, we have the group symbol, and finally we need to determine the group name. And for group name, we're going to use this table, this figure here. So that's part of that uh, group name figure. And for soil A here, um, so we know it's SPSC and percent of gravel. So this is for soil A. We know percent of gravel for soil A is 0%. Okay, so we're going to pick this upper route. The name of soil A, the group name is polygraded sand with clay or silty clay. So that's group name of soil A. So that's a complete classification of soil A, group symbol SPSC, the dual symbol case, and group name polygraded sand with clay or silty clay.